Welcome back to our Allstone Case of the Month series. Feel free to comment below and I'll attempt to address any questions or concerns. This case was evaluated by the resident, Dr. Nicole Mavani, and her attending, Dr. Paul Musay. The case starts with a patient arriving at the emergency department by medic after a sinkable episode at home while using the bathroom. The patient suffered a minor facial laceration, yet family reportedly called because the patient looked bad. Upon arrival in the emergency department, the patient was found to be hypotensive and tachycardic. She denied any chronic medical conditions, yet history is limited given her mild distress. She initially denied pain, yet when her abdomen was palpated, she was exquisitely tender with diffuse guarding. The treatment team decided to be true physicians by taking decisive actions to help clarify the patient's presentation. They easily could have started fluids and waited on the results of the CT scan. However, they grabbed the ultrasound machine to investigate farther since they felt ultrasound provided the best initial step to help guide resuscitation. A hypotensive exam was performed, which is often referred to as a RUSH examination, which stands for Rapid Ultrasound and Shock and Hypotension. While this term may be new to you, you are likely familiar with the FAST examination, which is part of the RUSH exam. The first image was obtained by placing the probe at the mid-axillary line with the probe marker facing axilla. This gives a view of Morrison's pouch, which many of you know as the hepatorenal view. Hopefully you have all determined that the Morrison's pouch view is grossly abnormal. There is a large amount of hypochoic free fluid surrounding the liver tip. This is highlighted in red with the liver in blue and the kidney in purple. Here is another right upper quadrant view in a slightly different orientation. The black hypochoic fluid is once again visualized in the hepatorenal recess. To help with identification, the liver is once again highlighted in blue with the fluid highlighted in red. These views in the right upper quadrant show the importance of feigning the entire anatomy rather than just relying on one clip or cut of the anatomy. The next view obtained was in the left upper quadrant known as the parasplenic view. This view is obtained by placing the probe in the mid-axillary line on the left with the probe marker facing the axilla. Like the right upper quadrant view, hypochoic fluid is identified in this clip as well. To help with identification, the free fluid is highlighted in red with the spleen highlighted in green. The location of fluid in this clip is important to appreciate because people often incorrectly only look at the junction of the spleen and the kidney. However, the more important location to look for free fluid is the area between the diaphragm and the spleen. The diaphragm can be identified as the bright hypercoke structure on the left of the screen. The previous clips clearly show free fluid in an otherwise young, healthy female. Given this finding, the physicians now had a reason for the vital sign abnormalities in the patient's pain, yet the etiology of the fluid was unknown. Given the age and lack of comorbid conditions for the patient, the physicians immediately looked in the pelvis for signs of an ectopic pregnancy to potentially explain the presentation. The probe was placed just above the pubic bone in a transverse orientation with the probe marker facing to the patient's right. The bladder was visualized and has been highlighted in yellow. The uterus was also visualized and highlighted in orange. No large amount of free fluid was identified in the pelvis. No evidence of pregnancy or ectopic was noted. After noting a large amount of free fluid along with a reported fall and potential trauma, the trauma team was activated. Blood products were initiated with the patient's vital signs responding to these resuscitative measures. Given the patient's response to blood products, a decision was made to take the patient for CT to determine a source of her free fluid. Here is a representative cut of the patient's CT scan showing an axial view of the mid-abdomen. As most of you have determined, there is a large abdominal mass noted. A sagittal cut of the mass gives an appreciation for its size. And finally, a coronal view showing the mass. Additionally, free fluid surrounding the liver can be visualized as well. Active extravasation was noted, and the radiologist felt the mass was suspicious for a leiomyosarcoma. Given the active extravasation on the CT imaging, interventional radiology was emergently consulted, and the patient subsequently went for an IR procedure. After the IR procedure, the patient's hemoglobin remained stable after the initial expected drop. Gynecology was consulted for the pelvic mass. While being worked up for the mass, the patient requested discharge of follow-up in her home state. No tissue diagnosis was ever made during her hospitalization. These following slides might look familiar if you watched the splenic rupture case from May 2020. However, I wanted to cover it again because I feel this domain of Alshan really has the potential to change management and lead to better patient outcomes. As I mentioned earlier, a hypotensive scan is often known as the RUSH examination, which stands for Rapid Ultrasound and Shock and Hypotension. The ultrasound probes depict the relative probe locations to perform the exam. The amount of potential components of the RUSH examination can initially be overwhelming on the surface. I like simplification utilizing a physiologic perspective to break this into the pump, the tank, and the pipes. The pump refers to obtaining high yield views of the heart, specifically looking for pericardial effusion indicative of tamponade, looking at the left ventricular ejection fraction as a measure of cardiac function, and finally looking at the right side of the heart for evidence of strain which could indicate a massive PE. Pulmonary embolism causing right heart strain was covered in the June 2020 and September 2019 cases. Tamponade was covered in the December 2019 case. If you want more detail, I recommend re-watching these cases. 
I like to visualize the tank as two large components of the body where blood can collect, the thorax and the abdomen. This tank concept should be well appreciated because it is basically the EFAST examination. Evaluate the thorax by placing a probe anteriorly looking for pneumothorax represented by a lack of sliding. I like to look for hemothorax by sliding my probe superior after obtaining my hepatorenal and splenic views as part of my FAST examination. The abdominal views are the classic abdominal FAST views most of you are comfortable obtaining. And finally, looking at the pipes. Look at the aorta for signs of aneurysm or dissection. Look at the IVC as a marker of volume status. Additionally, in the right clinical setting, potentially looking at the lower extremities for signs of a DVT if the cardiac exam is inconclusive or concerning for right heart strain. As I mentioned before, don't let the number of potential areas to scan intimidate you. I will rarely perform every component of the rush examination. I pick and choose based on my clinical suspicion what would potentially change my management of the critical ill patient. For example, in this case, the physician started with the FAST given the degree of abdominal pain with palpation. They did not perform a dedicated lung, cardiac aorta, or DVT study. Ultrasound should assist in your management, not hinder it. Focus on high-yield scans that give you answers that could alter your resuscitation and management. In conclusion, I want to once again highlight how the correct use of ultrasound can guide your resuscitation and management decisions. In this case, the information gleaned from the view showing free fluid resulted in a rapid administration of blood products and quickly facilitated advanced specialist involvement. Being able to advocate for more rapid interventions based on objective findings clearly results in faster definitive management and better patient care. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you can use the information provided in these case presentations to help take better care of your patients. Feel free to comment below.